is well new york is getting a new soccer stadium and a whole lot more the city council gave the go-ahead to build the city's first standalone soccer stadium in willits points queen Queens, pardon me. It's part of a major redevelopment plan that also includes affordable housing, retail, and open space. All right, joining us this morning from Gracie Mansion, Mayor Eric Adams and the Deputy Mayor for Housing, Economic Development, and Workforce, Maria Torres Springer. Nice to have you both here. Mayor, I think the headline is you and the City Council actually agreed on something. <laughs> and, and, and listen, more than what we realize, oftentimes is profile in the media, the things we disagree on. Uh, but when you do an analysis of what Adrian Adams, the speaker, and the council members, and what this administration has done, uh, we've landed the budget plan two, two years in a row. We're going to do it again, and we get some real stuff done. You know, yes, we're going to disagree. We're supposed to. That's what government is. But uh, they have been a great partner, and we are able to, we're able to deliver this amazing project uh, for New York City. Deputy Mayor Maria Torres Springer, can you tell us how New Yorkers will really feel the benefits of this? Well, this was it's a generational project. We're going to bring not just a new soccer stadium so that the world's game finds a home in the world's borough, but 2,500 new affordable homes. We're also going to build new parks, a new school, new retail, a hotel, and it's important. We're remediating 200,000 tons of contaminated soil, actually. And so we're building a whole new neighborhood that will deliver not just new homes, but 15,000 uh, construction and permanent jobs to Queens. So it's a huge, huge win, not just for the area, but for really every New Yorker. And we've been trying to do it for years, guys, ladies. We've been trying to do this for years. Uh, hats off to the Bloomberg's administration, the Blasio administration. But we're known as the finisher. Uh, we are able to go in and look at these long visions uh, and actually make them final. Uh, in, the, in the days to come, and this is one of them. Let me ask you one question about the financing, because $800 million privately financed from our understanding, but the city comptroller says that you left $500 million on the table by leasing the land instead of selling the land. Well, we disagree, and we disagree because the facts don't lie. Here's what I think we should focus on. Not just the $800 million of private investment to build that stadium, but $6 billion in economic output, right, over the course of the next 30 years because of all the jobs that will be there, and the 15,000 construction and permanent jobs. So the numbers speak for themselves, but really this is about making good on decades' worth of promises for the people of Queens, where we're helping solve the affordable housing crisis, and like we're doing in every part of the city, making sure that we think about um, and advance uh, projects that really make a dent in the housing crisis this city is facing. And, and part of the problem is this. Some of us view life half empty, <laughs> others view half full. I'm a half full guy. We're doing our thing, you know? So we know we got those naysayers on the sidelines. They've never been on the field, on the pitch, kicking and winning goals. We're winning goals. We got a goal here today. So those who want to rain on our parade, listen, they're going to be at our parade when we bring the World <laughs> Cup here and we get a soccer stadium here in 2027. I'm with you on that half full versus half empty thing. You know, Mayor, you, you started off by saying you and the city council actually have a good relationship. One of the things, though, that's come to the forefront here lately is the new requirement that all elected officials have to fill out a form in order to talk to senior staff members and commissioners uh, there in City Hall. The city council has really pushed back on this. Uh, what's your take on this, and, and why are you doing this right now? And, and it's untrue. You don't have to fill out a form to speak with uh, my senior uh, leadership. They do all the time. Form calls are exchanged. Emergency interactions are exchanged. This is when you want to coordinate a meeting. This is when you want the uh, leadership to come into your, your district. We want to make sure that if assembly person is asking and a council person is asking a senator, we want to coordinate it all together. We found that we have not been coordinated and maximizing our resources. And this is a way to do so. This same form I have been using for 10 years. People stop me on the street and say, bar president and now mayor, I want to meet with you. I give you a link. You fill it out. It is evaluated and we and we make it, but, make it happen. But mayor, the city council, the, the city council. One more thing, one more thing that's important. Every level of government, congressional, state, and city, 
I'm filling out the form. We but have why, over why is the city council coming out and saying that this is cumbersome, that it's retribution because you were angry when they required the police department to fill out all these new forms? You said it was going to be cumbersome for the, new, for the police department, and now there's this new, you know, edict for the city council to do it. No, and it's not new, as I stated. But, but is it cumbersome? Days. They're saying it's cumbersome and that it's retribution. Uh, there, there, there's a little irony in that, um, filling out a few questions to state so we can better collaborate and organize how we're going to deliver service to our city. And I don't want my deputy mayors and my commissioners and other uh, individuals uh, being du duplicative as we try to get the job done in, in this in the city. This is not cumbersome. If New Yorkers do it when they meet with me for 10 years, it has been successful. While mayor, I have sat down and communicated and inquired thousands of people, almost 25,000 as well, president, and we did it in an organized way. After two years in office, I realized we have to coordinate this stuff better. And trust me, they're already filling it out. Congressional members have filled it out. Uh, assembly members, state lawmakers have filled it out, and, and council members have filled it out because they know this is the best way to get stuff done. Can we talk about e-bike safety? They came uh, to your steps of City Hall where you work yesterday. Um, and there's a growing chorus in New York. People are very, very concerned about their safety. DOT is talking about widening the bike lanes. That's not the problem. <laughs> the problem is that these people are going fast on these e-bikes and they're hitting people who are crossing the street sometimes in the crosswalk. Rosanna, I am not the choir. I wrote the song. We need to organize and rethink our streets and really lean in. We have removed thousands of illegal motorcycles, mopeds, three-wheelers, uh, these uh, electric bikes. We have removed them off our streets, some that are uh, uh, not being used correctly. You should not be riding these devices on our sidewalks, uh, running the lights. So we have really cramped down on it. It has to up to the NYPD. And now it's up to the city council to collaborate with the state to look at everything from licenses to how we want to stop the sale of some of these, these bikes from coming in. And I'm with the, the public. Uh, I am tired of seeing them uh, being disrupted. And I gave an edict to the commissioner who has been implementing it. And we have removed thousands from off our, off our streets. But we need our lawmakers also to chime in. I actually saw police actually uh, pulling somebody over on an e-bike going too fast without any kind of registration on it. But I'm just saying, we don't need wider bike lanes. They're not we using the bike lanes. They're going fast in the bike lanes. They're going faster than cars. And, we need, and we, we need enforcement, and that's what we're doing. And there's something a lot of people don't realize. Many of these uh, bikes are being used in illegal crimes. We're finding people carrying guns, doing robberies, and using them as escape tools. And so we have been taking a real proactive approach. But now we need to look at the stop of sales, making sure that we don't even have the illegal uh, batteries that are causing some of the fires. So there's a combined effort that all of us must come, must come together and resolve. All right, Mayor, we're out of time, actually. I didn't even get to bring up rats and contraception. So. <laughs> rats and contraceptives? Yes. Okay, all right. That's, That's what we're doing, <laughs> right? That's for another day. All right, we appreciate you taking the time to join us, Mayor Adams and Deputy Mayor Maria Torres Springer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right.